What component in our cells is the genetic material? Although the answer seems obvious today, it's DNA, it took three scientists almost 20 years of hard work to discover this. The scientists, Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, and Macklin McCarty, began their search because of a surprising discovery made by Frederick Griffith in 1928. Griffith found that if a virulent strain of pneumococcus bacteria, known as the 3S strain, was heat-killed, mixed with live pneumococcus bacteria of the non-virulent 2R strain, and injected into mice, some of the R bacteria were transformed into living infectious 3S bacteria, which killed the mice. In addition, all descendants of the transformed bacteria were also infectious. Griffith knew that some component of the heat-killed S cells was responsible for this genetic change, but he did not know which one. He called the unknown agent the transforming principle. After Griffith published his findings, Avery and his colleagues set out to find the identity of the transforming principle. First, they broke open, or lysed, heat-killed 3S bacteria with a detergent, releasing the contents of the cells. Then, they used a centrifuge to separate the cellular contents, known as the cell extract, from the cellular debris. To make sure that the extract contained the transforming principle, the extract was mixed with a culture of living 2R bacteria. Then, the mixture was incubated and plated on a petri dish. Colonies of 3S bacteria appeared on the plate, indicating that the 2R bacteria had been transformed. Avery and his colleagues now knew that one of the components of the extract, polysaccharides, proteins, DNA or RNA, was responsible for the transformation, so they developed a method to isolate and test each one for its ability to transform bacteria. First, the extract was mixed with an enzyme called S3 to remove the polysaccharides. A sample of the treated extract was then mixed with 2R bacteria, incubated, and plated on a petri dish. 3S colonies appeared on the plate, indicating that the transformation had taken place even without the presence of polysaccharides. Therefore, polysaccharides could not be the transforming principle. Next, the extract was treated with protease enzyme, which digested the proteins. A sample of the protease-treated extract was then tested to see if it still contained the transforming principle. Once again, 3S colonies appeared on the plate, showing that proteins could not transform bacteria. Since both polysaccharides and proteins had been removed from the extract, the remaining extract contained only the nucleic acids DNA and RNA. To test each nucleic acid independently, Avery and his colleagues used enzymes known as nucleases. First, they used RNAs to break down the RNA in the extract. A sample of the RNA's treated extract was then tested. As before, the presence of 3S colonies on the plate proved that RNA was not the transforming principle. Finally, a sample of the nucleic acid mixture was treated with DNAs to destroy the DNA. After incubation with 2R bacteria, the sample was plated. This time, no 3S colonies appeared on the plate. Because the transforming principle was destroyed when DNA was removed from the extract, Avery and his colleagues concluded that the transforming principle must be DNA. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, The BioWay, on YouTube and press the bell icon so that you will never miss another update from my channel. Thank you.